So I, I'm having two microphones. Uh, going back to the, to, the, to the solutions and to the presentations we've had, and, and to your comment, actually, uh, can we think of any like universal solutions or groups of solutions, classes of solutions, which could be adopted in, in all of the countries? Can, can we think of this? Uh, yeah, maybe you can start. No, no. <laughs> but uh, uh, we should be talking about the quality, that we need the quality, this is an important thing, and we should think about the end users, so about the people who want the qualification and who want to, you know, to live with the qualification and present their, their, their qualification on the labor market and in their life. So this is the important thing that we have to think about this and we have to look at this as, as the main goal mm -hmm. of the establishing the systems. Okay, yes, thank you. Uh, yes, and Sylvie? Concerning quality assurance, uh, it, your uh, speech inspired me to share with you this French solution about quality assurance. Because you are mm, not talking a lot about quality assurance system in France, but you have one very good solution that you are including qualification only if they are functioning on the market at least three years. So it's a condition to be met at the beginning of the process and the submitting body is responsible to provide data about people with uh, qualification so uh, they need to have a job and they need to be successful and it's not uh, empty it's not like because uh, if you provide only some statistics and not data about uh, people having this qualification, uh, it can be very, you know, not useful later for candidates when it's included. So it's something, uh, I think, universal and can be applied in many other countries. Okay, th thank you for this comment. Mila, maybe you would you'd like to to share with us your comments regarding this universal? Regarding universal elements, yeah. Well, uh, because you know that Mila Geralia is professor of physics. Nuclear physics, am I right? Yes. So this universal type of things. Yeah, univers physics, yeah. Physics is universal base yeah, for all knowledge. <laughs> <laughs> so we can use physics, I mean, as a basis. <laughs> well, joke. Uh, uh, and, not, and not a full joke. <laughs> well, uh, I think uh, we have uh, common universal elements uh, from my point of view, I would say that uh, we can use concept learning outcomes as a universal element. Uh, it means knowledge and skills, and I mean the rest we have interests how to describe, but at least knowledge and skills. Uh, so they are elements we can commonly universally use for our, our I mean, describing our programs, describing our qualifications, describing our learning processes, assessment, etc., and the interests of the uh, stay, uh, labor market, uh, I mean, stakeholders, companies, uh, parents, I mean, etc. Then, uh, well, uh, different tools for classification of our knowledge, skills, and, uh, I mean, final products. Uh, qualifications. I think still we, we are able to use uh, this. Also, I think we have a uh, universal methodology how to uh, implement our uh, instruments, I mean, for classification, so-called qualifications frameworks. And uh, looking to our, uh, I mean, uh, uh, examples from Ireland, Scotland, France, here, uh, well, countries with uh, already quite well, I mean, advanced uh, within qualifications framework, it seems to me important to use, uh, I mean, methodology they, in fact, have experienced. They are, so it means, firstly, uh, uh, understanding of interests of different uh, stakeholders, uh, so it means examples, good examples, whatever. And then finally to make regulations, a kind of regulations, or maybe even not regulations, but just guidelines, how to, I mean, fully somehow implement into different uh, sectors. But not all of them, it seems, that always we can find, I mean, uh, 
different interests uh, for some situations, I mean, uh, education institutions not willing really to, uh, to be part of uh, this uh, common picture. Uh, well, uh, then I think we have also universal uh, uh, ways of uh, learning. At least we recognize three, three ways of uh, learning, of education, formal, informal, and informal. And uh, I would say that we need all of them. So, well, from the picture of my colleague from Hungary, I would say that we need, I mean, not only highways, I mean normal roads, but also small roads within for forests. So, uh, uh, so all of them, they have, I mean, uh, the value for different situations. For example, formal education we need for knowledge and skills. We really need for, I mean, as a base for our life or, I mean, further education and many things. But also we need informal learning for uh, situations uh, where we need, I mean, to learn something very fast, etc. But not necessarily to include all of them into the framework, I would say. This is my, my uh, understanding. And I think uh, uh, regarding quality assurance, we, will, we need this. I mean, uh, not for all of our activities within, uh, within education sector, but we need common universal elements of the quality assurance to show others that we, I mean, uh, well, as a way for a recognition, I mean, mutual recognition and trust. Mm -hmm. So this is how I understand. Okay. Uh, well, after this nice, real work with colleagues, and I mean, uh, understanding, at least I think I understood something from colleagues. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Anne, would you like to hear? Yeah? Yes. Um, there are a lot of good points. Um, I want to go back to the financial sector. Because for many years, I've been going to events like this, and the word mobility comes up. And today, it, I think it was only mentioned once. Um, individuals moving across borders, taking their qualifications with them. Whereas, we spent a lot of time in the past talking on mobility within the framework, upways and sideways and accumulation of credits and so on. But in reality, a framework can't just be a solution waiting for a problem. There are real world uh, globalization problems of workers moving across the globe mm -hmm. at a rate that people my age just don't understand. And I know in the past we had various attempts at having cross-border sectoral qualifications frameworks for some things like air traffic control, transport and logistics. The professional bodies can do it across borders and sectors are finding their feet to ignore the snags in national qualifications frameworks and inventing their own layer to solve their own problem. And that's what I would like to see develop at a fast rate not picking at things that are already developed until they're shiny and bright, uh, but to keep on at the front edge of development uh, in uh, sectors that need mobility of people all the time. Um, and in my head, I keep wanting to go back to that. And I know if I look back over old articles, journal articles I wrote, a lot of it was about the use of small qualifications so that people can have them recognized across a sector in any country. And that takes a little bit of thinking by the sector, but it's not impossible. The more people talk about minor awards, um, and now that you have the tools of learning outcomes, levels, and credits in national and meta frameworks, it makes it easier. So I would like to see less obsession with um, shiny things that are perfect at home and think about the global needs of individuals who have to cross borders for work. Okay. Yes, thank you for this, uh, for this comment. Okay, are there any panelists who would like to uh, address these issues? Sheila, yes. I just wanted to go back to the, the, the issue about ownership and probably the, the banking um, sectors is quite interesting for us in Scotland. Um, I've been involved with 
EBTN and the, the triple E qualification because our Chartered Institute of Bankers in Scotland is one of our credit rating bodies. So they are authorised by us to put their qualifications on the framework, which, which they have, and they are recognised, but they retain the ownership of those. So to come to the, the gentleman's point, we do have qualifications like Microsoft on our um, framework because they retain the ownership. So no one else can just take that and, and use it. They need to contact Microsoft if they want to do that. They need to contact the Chartered Banker Institute if they want to do that. Um, and I think that's what's helped us attract a lot of these organisations to work with us in the framework because we give them an incentive to be involved. So they're not paying money to develop that to then see other people use it unless they want to do that. And we do have some organisations who do that, put it on the framework, and then license other organisations to deliver it. So we do have a range, and we've tried to be flexible and build our framework from the, the bottom up. So it started in the higher education sector with some individuals who got together and thought this would be a good idea, and then the vocational education sector got involved, and employers, and we've brought everyone along with us. So we've come from a different place, but I think retaining that ownership for employers and training organisations, etc., has been quite important for us to be able to grow our framework. Okay, yes, thank you. And, and Matteo, you wanted to, to, uh, to yes. comment? Yes, yes. Sheila, comment uh, brings to me other ideas about this issue that for, even for me is really central about uh, intellectual property of, uh, of qualifications. Because um, looking at what uh, the, the comparison between the uh, French system and the others, uh, I, I can uh, see, uh, we can see in our the presentation of this morning that uh, there is some uh, system like uh, yours, like the French, the Irish, where uh, the, pri the private providers keep the, keep the property. And other system like the Polish and the, and the Hungarian, uh, where uh, the, 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 system, the property passes uh, automatically to the state. So uh, I see in these two different approaches, I see pro and cons. Because, uh, for instance, the problem in the French system right now is the proliferation. So every, every um, certif uh, certification. Uh, uh, provider certification holder can apply in in the registry and uh, also and there is a kind of uh, similar certification that are are uh, registered uh, and are very close to the each other but are they are two different registrations so there is a, a problem of uh, of um, overlappings and the problem of, of, of uh, proliferation and uh, and the, in this sense I, uh, I really appreciated uh, what uh, uh, Han presented this morning, because, uh, so the, the solution of the common award systems is called. So I think, for instance, that this could be a very good solution for the French system because uh, can limit uh, this kind of uh, overlapping, uh, this kind of uh, of, pro of proliferation. About the the the, 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 the pros uh, of uh, of transfer the property to the states, this is uh, is quite the. Mm, to me too, I, 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 quite, I agree. I quite agree with uh, with Sheila. It's it's, uh, it's difficult to 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 understand it. Of course, this is limit the applications in the registry. So we do not will 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 not we, we, you will not have problem of uh, of proliferation and overlappings because I think that the private uh, uh, providers that uh, want to 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 um, to register non formal qualification in the in the in the registry maybe there will there will be less than in uh, in France for instance because there is the problem of transfer of uh, of property probably but uh, you say that that is for keeping uh, uh, same level of quality assurance same level of uh, of uh, results in the provision of the of the certification so this is uh, it will be very interesting to maybe to check in Poland in the forthcoming years how will uh, will work your system uh, in respect to this uh, to this issue? Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes, thank you for these comments. Uh, I think it is yes one of our yeah, how to say the discovery or maybe we we explicitly raised this issue of ownership within the frameworks. I do not recognize that many. Actually, I do not recognize any papers uh, dealing with the issue of the ownerships and classification of frameworks with regards to the to, to, to the ownership and 
Uh, yes, and, and I think it is one of the reasons is that in Ireland or uh, in Scotland and the, in, in, the, in the UK countries, the retaining ownership is so natural, so maybe it was not even worth mentioning that it might be different. And all of a the sudden there are some countries in Europe who, who uh, I'm not saying whether good or bad, uh, yeah, but they decided to adopt different solutions. Yeah, and we see the Hungary, but from what Jan said, that in the NSK, yeah, there are, the register is not blocked to other awarding bodies, like yeah, similar in, uh, in Poland. So we see that there are different patterns emerging. And I think that it would be very interesting for, uh, for the readers to look at chapter five of our reports regarding these ownership rights. Uh, yeah, we even uh, prepared a short uh, uh, story that the branch organization wants to submit the qualification. Is it possible in your national system for another body to, to be an awarding body for this qualification. So all of us referred somehow to this, to this case, so I think it will be interesting for, uh, for the readers to, to analyze this, this ownership issue. Uh, uh, yes, yeah, so, uh, and going back to, uh, to, uh, to the quality you, uh, you mentioned, uh, do you think it is possible now, uh, looking at the trends and putting more and more emphasis on the external quality assurance on this, on this procedure, additional annex to the EQF recommendation, directly referring to the quality assurance processes. Do you think is it, it w that it will be possible to have these procedures lighter? Or do you think that the trend uh, will be yeah, kind of indicated by Ireland to go, yeah, to be more and more regulated, more and more costly? Uh, what do you think? What would be the trend uh, with regards? Uh, because we, uh, we say we need less regulations, uh, but at the same time we see that in many countries it goes actually the, the opposite. Uh, yeah? Uh, yeah, I said Ireland. So, so. I think that's quite a good question because I was just talking to Barbara first thing this morning, and I said I had a, a journal paper in mind, and the title was going to be From Light Touch to Firm Hold, but I had nothing, no content. But that, that is the question. In our case, in my experience, we've certainly gone from light touch to strict control, uh, if, for good reasons of quality assurance, but then that becomes an end in itself and you, you have to weigh the losses in the process of achieving what is perceived as um, paper-based quality assurance. Uh, but uh, I'm, I'm not very strictly committed uh, on the matter of where the scale is, when is light to light, and then you have a disaster in your market and when is it over strict and people don't want to be on the framework because it's too much of a burden. So I think it's a ba fine balancing act and each country, depending on who's the minister or you know, which philosophy is dominant will swing one way or another. And the market then will come in and take its share anyway. Thank you. And before we go to, to our panelists, let me look at the audience. Uh, do you have... Uh, okay, you do already. <laughs> now it's a question of, of quality. Uh, in Poland, uh, we have uh, uh, rules that for every qualification, you can have unlimited number of certification institutions. And one thing which is limited, it's number of uh, uh, quality assurance uh, institutions. The maximum is five for one qualification. So let's consider that one qualification, we have five certification institution, and every, this institution has one different quality assurance institution. Do you think that it will be always the same qualification? With five different certification systems and five different qualification assurance companies? Which is sitting right here, I'm not pointing the finger. <laughs> yes. Uh, 
like? Would you would you like to to, to address uh, some of these issues? Yeah. Hello, my name is Lev Bogut. I work in the Polish Ministry of National Education, and I think that the, uh, the reason for limiting the number of the quality uh, assurance uh, uh, institutions was to keep the quality assurance consistent within the uh, certain qualification. So that that was the reason. Uh, to keep, and that I don't think now we have one qualification, market qualification in the system, and one uh, certification institution. So I don't think that in the near future there will be 20 or more uh, certification institutions for this uh, qualification. But if it will be the case, we will of course think about the, uh, increasing the number of the uh, quality assurance institutions in the future. Thank you. Thank you. It is really nice to hear the kind of Polish discussion in, in Prague at, the, at, this, at, this, at this conference. I, no, I can yes, add also something uh, from Poland. Uh, okay. Uh, yes, just, just let me say that I remember times when, yeah, when uh, there were a very, very limited number of persons knowing anything at all about the frameworks. And now here you see uh, what discussions we have. Okay, yes, please. Thank you very much. Uh, let me introduce myself. Uh, I'm computer scientist. So, of course, I'd like to know how the computer science education is uh, well somehow projected into the uh, national qualification framework because all of us know that the uh, current uh, current trend is to request some computer literacy from uh, people coming or uh, this is just one of the prerequisite of the mobility of workforce how these people who will be moving between the countries can show because of course most of the, those who have not uh, just left the school but who are above 30 how will they be able to certify that they are qualified because of course the level of educational systems is not equal in england and in uh, our country for example because computer science background is not requested everywhere uh, so and of course it is uh, relevant for all levels of people uh, who are entering the uh, work market. So, can you explain to me how the national qualification framework can be used to confirm that the person coming into the um, factory in France will uh, prove that his uh, computer literacy is adequate? Okay. Yes. Thank you for this question. Yeah, Matteo. No, I, I don't want it necessarily to, to reply, but but uh, the, 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 your question, if I well understood, is is the the, the reason we, because we are here together, <laughs> because uh, uh, if there is a, an issue in Europe about uh, European qualification frameworks, it's exactly to 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 incite the mobility of workers, a mobility of uh, of diploma holders uh, at every level of diploma. So the European Union uh, launched the, the operation of uh, creating a, a overarching framework because uh, the interest was exactly this one to, 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 to improve mobility of, uh, of European citizens. So, the, but uh, what we are dealing, the, 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 the object of, uh, of our project is uh, to to try to compare ourselves and to understand that uh, the referencing to European uh, qualification framework uh, is not a simple, is not so mechanical operation, but it's something that uh, that has to be studied and that's to be thoroughly understood because our system have rooted in our countries and they are very different each other. So, so this is the starting point. So, we are here in to such extent to. To, in, uh, I would say to reverse the point of view. So the point of view of the European Union is uh, uh, everybody has something, but the important thing is that everybody references what is uh, existing at the European level in order to favor mobility. We are trying to say the opposite. We are trying to say, the, no, just stop a second. Look, we have to look jointly at what we have in our countries, what are the history of our systems, and then we can uh, maybe to, to, to reference to, to, to the European framework, to the overarching framework in a more uh, informed way, a more uh, conscious way, I would say. So this is the operation that, uh, 
that you are trying to do uh, in this project, but uh, largely maybe in, uh, among uh, technical uh, institutes, national technical institute, that, uh, that national institute that deals with uh, with uh, these uh, these uh, these things. So I don't know if I completely uh, answered to your question, but maybe our colleagues can integrate. And before we go, this Zoltan here wanted to to, to address this issue. Thank you. I've been dealing with education and research for 25 years. And uh, last year, um, uh, a study was published by Oxford University. So 47% of, uh, percent of jobs will disappear in the next 25 years. So when we are talking about the quality, I think there are two, weak, uh, two weakest uh, uh, points. One is how to design, because it must be refla uh, reflecting uh, very fast and quickly to, to the demands of the labor market. And the other one, the other focus, must be at the, uh, the procedure of the approval. Because a lot of, a lot of systems are more bureaucratic. bureaucratic. So when we talk about quality assurance, these, kind, these two topics we should uh, take into consideration. Thank you.